You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for Institutional Advisors. Welcome to the show, Bob. Yeah, good morning, Jim. Good to be with you. The U.S. Fed hiked interest rates from 0 to 0.25% earlier in the week. Has that had any major effect on the markets? Oh, yeah. I put a whipsaw into some stocks and currencies and you know, as it was being announced kind of thing. But it really is an indicator of just how foolish policymaking has become. You know, uh, they, they really got this idea that if they provide credit and set interest rates, they can then affect uh, my market history downstream. And, and actually, uh, I think I, am, I could build a pretty good case that they're merely along for the ride. And what we can do is go back to the early days when the group of, let's call them superstitious bankers, uh, decided that they needed a central bank in the U.S. in the early 1900s. And their basic case was that they knew that recessions followed a financial uh, setback. So then they're thinking, oh, brilliant. Actually, it was intuitive. If there is a bank of la- a last resort there, it will prevent the setbacks, and therefore you won't have recessions. And therefore, we can bank merrily and not have any risk. Well, the bank, the Federal Reserve opened its doors for business in January 1914, and there's been 19 recessions since. So does everybody, anybody say, hey, your basic thesis, is it working? Nobody really of any importance ask that question. There's all kinds of people who are not of the central banking persuasion. But the problem is that the central banking community has got the attention of policymakers. And why does that happen? Well, they tell the policymakers, we can provide you with a, 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 always a, a, an endless recovery going, so your taxes, or tax revenues are going up. And on and on. So it, it's it's been um, it's been one of the greatest promotions in history. And of course, we can show in the old Vancouver Stock Exchange definition of a promotion, and that was in the beginning, the promoter has the vision and the public has the money. And at the end of the promotion, the public has the vision and the um, the promoter has the money. So here you are, um, let's say the last decade, there's been a great belief in the ability of government not just to manage the economy, but they can also now manage the um, temperature of the planet. So there's the vision. <laughs> the public's got the vision about these two, let's call them superstitions, and the government side is making trillions of dollars out of it. So uh, according to the old Vancouver definition of a promotion, this is what government is all about. And of course, the two best examples are the concept of <coughs> excuse me, managing the economy and uh, managing the climate. So absolutely ridiculous. So at any rate, the uh, growth of the economy in the last five or six years has been weak. Uh, of course, it followed the worst recession, the worst financial contraction since the 1930s. But anyways, it's been weak. So here's another absurdity in policymaking whereby they've got all kinds of uh, bureaucratic rules and intrusions and red tape and constraints on the economy. So then the economy isn't expanding as fast as they want. So then they They've got this theory that if they add credit, that will stimulate the economy. And it isn't. So what is happening is the the credit expansion hasn't been going into business expansion. It's been going into speculation in financial assets. Would you include real estate in that speculation? Would I include which? Uh, Real estate. Oh, yeah. Now, real estate, yes, Uh, in the financial centers. Uh, And, of course, in Canada, Toronto and Vancouver have been absolutely outstanding. So... um, the, here, then the next step in this reasoning is that why would aggressive fe, uh, central bank expansion not bid up economy, uh, commodities, uh, including gold and silver, which have been in a serious decline since 2011? Whereas prior to that, and here's, this has been a, a, an embarrassment for gold and silver bugs, is that prior to that, yes, Fed expansion did drive up precious metals. And then you get to the point where it doesn't drive up precious metals and it doesn't drive up commodities. It's because it's been driving up junk bonds and uh, real estate and financial centers and and uh, the stock market. So it's obvious that the public 
chooses what would be speculated in and then runs it to excess and you take a look at the big action in low-grade bond markets, the risky stuff was the, the greatest in history and that peaked out in June of 2014. So you had the yield on uh, triple C bond down to, I guess, about 8% and now it's up to 18%. So it's been rising for a year and a half. And then everybody gets focused on the fact that the Federal Reserve raised their administered rate by a quarter of 1%. It's absurd. So they, sure, you can look at some of the charts where, uh, oh, commercial paper rates or T-bill rates uh, have increased um, quite noticeably in the last five or six weeks, which was in anticipation, correctly, of the fact that they would raise the administered rate. But the overall thing is that they were following the rise in, in market rates of interest that's been on for, in the case of junk, a year and a half. And then you've had in uh, treasury, bill, a treasury market, long-dated treasury, they've been rising in yield since the first of the year. So these guys are behind the market, and yet there's a whole contingent of, of uh, people out there that focus on the Federal Reserve as if they really had some sort of magic wand, and it's not the case. So, anyways, as you went through the great day, Wednesday, on the great announcement, uh, you had some volatility in the market, and you also had the um, stock market rise up to the announcement, and you also had a rally in, in uh, junk bonds, but the junk bonds were really oversold in the week before, so they were going to rally anyways and help the stock market. But what you have now is, uh, well, at the moment, the Dow's down a couple hundred points, and uh, you've got junk bond again selling off in price. So, yeah, there it is, 263 points down on the Dow. So uh, all of the the good... Now, oh, yeah, and one more thing I want to back up on this um, increase in, in, the, in the administered rate is that they started talking about raising the rate maybe a year and a half ago. And I think at the time, they... My view was that they are being so reckless, so obviously reckless, that they had to talk about raising rates in order to look prudent. But then I don't think market forces at any time until they started to rise on their own would, they, they couldn't raise the rate. And so here we are now. It's, it's a push me, pull you kind of situation. But my conclusion is, is that market rates of interest were rising, and that allowed the Fed then to come up with a discount rate increase. And uh, some of the commercial banks, of course, raised their lending rate, but it's, you know, what, 3.5% or something, something absolutely absurd. So here we are. It is absolute nonsense. It's uh, a fake and a fraud about the notion that they could manage the economy. And you have indications around the world of a uh, of a slowing economy, uh, com commodity prices uh, like industrial commodities such as crude oil and, and base metals making new lows as we speak. You've got the Baltic Freight Index, dry index, which keeps track of freight rates and, th and that has to do with international trade and that is setting new lows. Uh, I don't think new, lo new lows over 20 years or something like that in that one. So that side is weak. And it's indicating a weakening economy, which then gets very difficult to service debt, whether you're a corporation or an individual. If your income's diminishing and you've got a huge debt load on, it gets, it gets difficult to, to pay the interest, let alone pay down the debt. And then the other thing is the economy slows then tax revenues to municipals and provincials and state and local levels of government and also federal governments, they slow down. So it gets very hard to service debt in a um, in a weakening economy, which I think we're looking at now. So let's conclude the bit about the Fed moving the interest rate. It's absolutely absurd indeed. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after the break. See singing impressionist Andre Philippe Gagnon. And I came to myself. In Oliver, December 29th. In Kelowna, December 30th. Buy online and save at ontourtickets.com. Unbelievable harmonies, spectacular performance, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel. Bird Dog and the Vintage Electric Band, Saturday, January 9th at the Alex Goulden Hall. Buy online and save at OnTourTickets.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, when you're talking about junk bonds, 
Uh, I've heard that some major junk bond players now are refusing to pay out. That's how tight it is. Yeah. What it was is there was a mutual fund and I think a hedge fund that were loaded with uh, low-grade securities, junk for the high yield. Of course, the public was reaching for yield, and it became a one-way street. Uh, you could buy them, and then all of a sudden they were they were being hit with so many redemptions, and they turned around and then went to the bond dealer, the bond trading desk, and hell, they weren't going to take on any inventory. So um, that's it. So they then closed the fund so that you could not redeem your money. Uh, probably they've got something in there that you could redeem it slowly over a period of time because you just can't freeze things that badly. So, And that is very much of a uh, danger sign that's coming there. So this is going to make people a little more wary about buy, buying um, high-yield stuff because you, they're going to say, hey, is, you know, how are you going to get out? It's like you can... Uh, the, the the hopes of seeing only one cockroach. This is two cockroaches, <laughs> and you know that there's you know that there's going to be more. So, anyways, what you what we're looking at now is remember we were looking for an important low for base metals, uh, basically copper, uh, in November, and so far that one is holding a low there. Then the other one we were looking for an important low, or well, crude oil to continue down well through December, maybe into January, and check the uh, technicals on crude yesterday, and there's nothing at this instant that would say, hey, a bottom is at hand. It's like one of those things like trying to catch a falling knife, and if you've got the right technical tools, you can say, yeah, this is knife land, and I'm not going to try and buy one at the moment or catch one. So this is of course, devastating yet again to that portion of the of the uh, of the bond market where there was a lot of debt issued to fund oil and gas uh, businesses, and these guys are having going to be having severe problems in trying to service it. So that one, but but let's be uh, watchful for a an important low in in crude oil sometime within I don't know two or three maybe four weeks or something like that. But I think our technical work will identify the opportunity as it arrives. Even the grains, uh, which were recovering for a few months, eh, they've given it up as well. So, And you've had, um, a, uh, you had a strong move in the U.S. dollar, and then it corrected for a while, and now it's firming up again. So, And this is, again, one of the things that history, thankfully, can provide instruction on, is that when you're in a post-bubble environment, and the bubble blew out in 2007, and as we noted, it's a classical bubble like 1929, then the condition is that the senior currency becomes chronically strong or firm against most other currencies and most commodities for most of the time. And this is one of those conditions. Uh, you talk, you know, I've, you've seen the comments from um, commodity bulls uh, over the last few years, and they just can't figure it out. It, it's they look at supply and demand and say this, that, and the other thing. And but uh, it's a problem. Uh, and but it's not a problem that the Federal Reserve can fix by providing more credit. And it's not a problem that the Bank of Canada can fix by lowering the Canadian dollar. Because if you get commodity prices falling in half, in order to stimulate exports, do they then want the Canadian dollar to fall in half? No, it's, it would be most dislocating. And I condemn the Bank of Canada for allowing the Canadian dollar to be so weak. You know, it's not that they could prevent the dollar from declining, but they could, by tightening things up, um, diminish the amount that it has fallen. And uh, as a matter of fact, they should get rid of the Bank of Canada and put in a, a, a currency board, just get it back to par and lever there. And uh, that would be fine by most Canadians, I think. So anyways, the, uh, we're looking for a possible bottoming in, the, in crude oil next two or three weeks. Uh, that would then allow base metals to bottom. We can get a rally out of that side. Gold stocks. Well, they're, let's say they're, they're trying to base. Uh, we've a couple of weeks ago recommended accumulating a few gold stocks on weakness and we haven't recommended anything other than that um silver makes new lows um, and the gold silver ratio is um well let's put it this way let's look at the silver gold ratio where you divide gold, silver by gold and in a uh, bull market for precious metals silver will outperform gold and that is not happening the other thing that is happening that is positive is that the gold shares have been outperforming the uh, bullion price a little this is modest 
bottoming stuff. So uh, we would own a few gold shares, but we wouldn't be fully committed. We would avoid silver and silver stock. Bob, thanks a lot for chatting with us. Good to be with you, Jim. And, of course, the best of the season. And all the best to you. My guest has been Bob Hoy, market historian and chief investment strategist for Institutional Advisors, their website, institutionaladvisors.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. You can forward comments or questions for the show to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.